Since opening their doors in 1894, the National Maternity Hospital has a dedicated team of over 800 members, delivering an average of 9,000 babies each year and 25 babies every day. The staff endeavours to make each experience special for all parents and babies who pass through the doors. Bernice Waters from Wicklow is expecting her third baby and has come to the hospital today for a 32-week scan in the Fetal Assessment Unit. My name is Bernice Waters, my husband's name is Niall. We have two gorgeous little kids, Carly and Dylan. Carly's four and Dylan's two. We all live in Ratnew. I found out I was pregnant in January. It was a surprise to the family, planned to us. You know, it was a shock because we're young and we had two children and, you know, it was a shock to everybody else. Like, both, they're all happy. They're, they're on cloud nine. Like, for us, it was just a shock for everyone as well. Head down. Just, it was breached two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Both head down at the moment. Um, head. On this pregnancy, I kind of felt movements quite quickly, and I got big at the start, very quick, and <clears throat> at the time I said. I've not feeling like I'm having twins. Do you know, I'm massive. And everyone's like, ah, no, no, you're not having twins, you know, you're not that big. I'm like, I'm telling you now, I'm feeling an awful lot of movements, like for two, three months. And they said, oh, that's because you're toward pregnancy, your body's well used to it, you know. And then when I went up and had the scan, and I was telling the lady that was doing the scan about the way I was at the start, thinking I was having twins. and. I'm not having them now, though, you know. And then she goes, one heartbeat, two heartbeat. And I was like, I kept going on talking to her. And I, I had not, my husband kept saying, did you just say two? And she, I said, what? I was like, oh my God, no. And I repeated myself around four times and then I burst out and she was like, no, I can't be having twins. I can't. <laughs> you know, I've already got two. It was a shock now. Twin one is 3.13 and twin two is 3.11. So they're both growing very well. So, I mean, they're, they're good, sizes, um, good sizes for twins, you know? So it's very good. Um, and they're both head down. So um, now number two can be changing position all the time, even in labor, you know? So once number one is head down, then that's, uh, that's very reassuring. So provided you're well and the babies are well and growing well, um, then hopefully we should be fine. Renice is 32 weeks and four days and she's having a monochorionic diamniotic twins which means that the uh, babies are sharing a placenta so they have a common uh, circulation, a shared circulation but they're in two separate bags of water. So they were growing very well today and so there was no major discordancy in growth. Both babies are growing very well. Because these pregnancies are more complicated um, then um, sometimes you might have to deliver in the fetal interest earlier if the babies aren't growing well or if there was later signs of twin-to-twin transfusion or if the maternal condition necessitated early delivery in cases of severe preeclampsia. But it's usually 37 weeks with this type of twins because there is a very small risk of twin-to-twin transfusion after 37 weeks. So that will be kind of the general consensus worldwide to deliver that little bit earlier. Agnieszka Zaman, originally from Poland, is expecting her first baby and is currently 36 weeks along in her pregnancy. My name is Agnieszka. I'm originally from Poland, um, but I've lived in Ireland for the past five years. So I do consider it my home right now, especially that I got married here um, nearly two years ago. And that's where my family is at the moment and a new member is on the way. My husband is actually from Bangladesh. Uh, so it's an interesting mixture of two cultures together. So I can't wait to see um, what the baby's going to look like. It'll be pretty interesting. 
I don't have any members of my family living here, just friends, just friends and time for for career. So we're just by ourselves and that's how we're going to have to deal with a new arrival, just yes. on our own. Did you find out if it's a boy or a girl? It's a boy. A boy. Mm -hmm. My sister was four months pregnant when I found out I was pregnant myself. We could share that experience together and that made it a little bit easier. Um, because I always could ask her questions, oh, how, how did you find that, how, how things happened for you at that stage of the pregnancy. Um, so I think that was, that was a big help for me. Um, and that made up a little bit for not having my family around here. Cold gel here, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. So, maybe start reaching in here. Mm -hmm. Nice and strong. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe it doesn't want to show us its face today. It never does show it. It never does, isn't mm -hmm. it? And the fluid levels are in the baby are normal. Okay, okay. So everything looks good. Mm -hmm. Any questions, anything you're not sure about? No, no. Everything is fine. Perfect. Okay, so um, if you go and see your GP in one week, mm -hmm. you come back to see us in two weeks. In two weeks, okay, okay. perfect. And any problems in the meantime, you know where we are. Alright, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would say <laughs> it was uh, partially planned and uh, also a surprise. I knew that I wanted to be a mummy. Um, and I got married, so it was a perfect time. But around the time that we started trying for a baby, um, I was advised by my doctor to have a surgery to have my gallbladder removed. So I had stones in it, and it would just be a little bit dangerous um, to have that condition while being pregnant. So I had to put my plans on hold, and I arranged the surgery in Poland. I had it done. Um, I came back uh, to Ireland rested a little bit and I thought okay let's start trying and maybe about after two weeks I found out I was pregnant so I was a bit surprised at first because it was so soon but of course uh, I was very happy with just a few weeks to go in her pregnancy Back at home, nerves are starting to set in for Bernice. When they told me they were identical twins, I was like, oh, brilliant. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, you know, it's, it's great. It's a gift to be given twins. But then to be given identical twins was just like, oh, my God, you know. I am a little bit nervous. But the only thing I'm nervous about is if complications happen on the second twin. I know everything's going to go fine on the first twin because they've said it to me because it's head down and everything's fine. But with twin two being breech, or I'm a little bit nervous in that sense, just in case, oh, he's not going to come out or have to have a section. Do you know, I, I am a little bit nervous, but I can't wait to see the twins now. I really can't wait, like, just to see, just to see two babies in front of me, the exact same, it's just, it, it is exciting. Bernice has returned today to us for her 34-week scan to see how her pregnancy with identical twins is progressing and we monitor very closely for gr the growth of these twins to make sure everything is okay. So we measure the head of the first one. Mm -hmm. That's the head of the first one there. Do you think I could go myself now with the head being so well there? You could. You could go into spontaneous labour. About 30% of twins deliver spontaneously before 30, 37 weeks. Around and around 37 weeks we'd be planning for delivery of the babies. Yeah. So now what we're just going to do is uh, measure the blood flow in both babies. This, this is the, called Doppler. That's the, uh, the blood flow in the umbilical artery there. It looks very good. And that's a normal waveform. So that's uh, again an indication of very good placental function in the, in the baby. So the blood flow looks very good in both. So we're going to just look at the graph now because I transfer the measurements over just to check that the growth is normal in both. Both moving very well, normal fluid. They're doing fine. 
Bernice now, she's 34 weeks and five days, and uh, they're twins that are sharing a placenta. So her scan went very well. Uh, both twins are growing very nicely. Um, an indication of good placental function in addition to growth is the amniotic fluid, which is normal in both babies. And the blood flow that we checked, the Doppler blood flow is normal in both umbilical arteries. So the twins are progressing very well, normal growth and uh, normal fetal well-being. So we would expect Bernice to um, continue for the moment. Um, with identical twins, we tend to suggest delivery about 37 weeks rather than go beyond 38 weeks. They tend to be slightly more complicated than twins who are not uh, sharing a placenta. These twins are sharing a placenta. They're called monochorionic twins, and with those type of twins, we tend to deliver them around 37 weeks. So if Bernice is still here in two weeks' time, we probably assess her with a view to inducing the labour if that's what she wants but she may well go into labour between now and then because she's feeling a lot of pressure down there. But she's doing very well. Sir Jeannie Lambino from South America is expecting her third child. She is now 37 weeks along in her pregnancy and visits the hospital every week due to complications such as type 2 diabetes and hypertension. When you have a pregnancy complicated by diabetes and hypertension, there are risks for the pregnancy for the baby in particular and we want to make sure the baby's growing well, is growing normally, and that Sajini's blood sugars are staying under control, because as the pregnancy progresses, things can change very quickly. So it's important to keep a, a good close eye on her. My blood pressure shoot up again, so they have to keep me for an overnight observation. Hopefully everything is okay. The baby is fine, he's doing well, so uh, there's nothing wrong really. It's just my blood pressure, it's just going up and down. So hopefully they could control it with the blood pressure tablet and I could go home like tomorrow or Monday maybe <laughs> because it's weekend so I don't have any idea if I could go home. Okay, so what happens then is if you have to be delivered early. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy with the dose you're on at the moment. I think stay on that, you're doing mm -hmm. fine. Okay, I don't see a need to change that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your appetite gets less at this stage, especially mm -hmm. with the tablets, you get a bit sleepy in that. Mm. So if you're eating a little bit less, if you don't think you're going to eat the full amount of your dinner, then take a little bit less and over rapid with it. Okay. So you're not going to hypo and then be chasing the hypos. Yeah. So Jeannie's coming in because she was in for a scan today and everything seems to be going fine from the baby's point of view, but when they were monitoring her there, her blood pressure is a little bit higher than we'd like it to be. When that happens, it can be sometimes just the stress of coming to a clinic. Um, or anxiety if you're late or something like that. Um, so what we normally would do is if someone's blood pressure is up, they're monitored in the day ward uh, for a number of hours. And sometimes if it doesn't settle, she's monitored overnight. Always with a, a decision to be made, if the blood pressure isn't settling, what's the next um, medication that's in our, our arsenal? Or what's the next plan? Is it safe to wait uh, any longer in the pregnancy or should the baby be delivered? Thanks, Thanks, Mary. Mind yourself. Thank you. Keep up the good work. God Thanks. bless her. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. Now 38 weeks along, back at home, Agnieszka is getting ready for her new arrival. I've had pretty much an ideal pregnancy. Absolutely healthy. Um, I would even call it symptoms free. I don't know if such pregnancies exist, but mine could be an example because I haven't suffered any pregnancy symptoms that would be considered rather unpleasant. So I've been, I've been feeling great, very healthy, baby's also healthy, developing well. Everything is going great and it's already 33 weeks, so, um, so far so good, no complaint at all. Many of my um, friends have children already and I've heard some stories that it can be um, difficult. Um, and I also worried a bit having to, to go to work and being pregnant, how would that be for me? And um, yeah, it's so far, it's, it has been very easy. Um, at some stage, I actually, it was difficult for me to, to realise that I'm pregnant because um, there was nothing there, no, uh, no morning sickness, no, no, none of those early symptoms um, that most women have. And only at about 17 weeks when I started feeling the baby's movements, that's when I realised, okay, I have a little resident in there, and that's for sure. 
Agnieszka has come in for a routine uh, appointment. She's now 39 weeks, only five days left to her due date. So she's come again for a routine normal checkup. We check mother's blood pressure, her urine, and chat to her and make sure she's well. Then we check baby to make sure baby's growing for the appropriate size for the gestation, that baby's moving well. For first time mothers, it's a very special occasion being pregnant. And for each of them, we try and make their pregnancy as individual as possible. We really encourage them for, to attend their antenatal classes uh, during pregnancy to book in early into our uh, session of classes here in Hollis Street or else to arrange classes locally. I came here today for a doctor's checkup and um, everything went well, everything seems to be going okay. Um, baby's um, head down, baby's heartbeat is strong and the amount of fluid is fine around the baby so everything is okay. 39 weeks plus two days, so it's only five days away from the due date. It's all in your back, is it? That's it. I'm That's it. Her niece came in this morning with regular pains. She got the ambulance in because she lives in Wicklow. Um, when she came in, she was here with us at about half 10, and we examined her. She wasn't in established labor at that stage. So we did a tracing. We monitored the two little babies for a short period of time, and then she had a little walk around. Her pains in the meanwhile got stronger. So an hour later, she was in established labor. Are you okay, Well, initially Bernice felt she wasn't overly keen for an epidural. We explained to her that perhaps it, we often recommend an epidural as pain relief for um, somebody having twins. Um, she knew that it was going to be longer than her other babies, so she um, had an epidural for pain relief. But much more comfortable than that. It's much more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Sajini Lambino has type 2 diabetes and is in hospital today for a 37 week scan. Women with diabetes of any kind, but in particular people with type 2 or type 1 diabetes, need to be scanned fairly regularly towards the end of pregnancy in particular, even if they're not complicated by high blood pressure. Um, what you're looking for is to assess the baby's growth, to make sure that the flow of blood to the placenta is good and that there's no excess fluid around the baby. Uh, the scans are done on a serial basis so that you have them for comparison to make sure that the baby's growing as you would expect. Baby moving well? He is like... Not really as active as the past few days, like. Okay, so we just have his day nicely there. Nice healthy amount of water around the baby there, Sajini. Not too much, which is good. Are you going down to the clinic after this? Yeah. They're going to give you a date, are they? Hopefully, because they still have not booked me for my C-section. You've had two sections before, haven't you? Yeah. So Jeannie's had two previous caesarean sections, and it would be usual practice if somebody's had two caesarean sections because there's scars on the womb and a slight weakness there. 
um, because of that, the usual practice would be to electively plan a section for a third pregnancy or subsequent pregnancy. And so she will get a date to come in, um, 38, 39 weeks, depending on safety for the baby, depending on the progress and the, and the stage of uh, how her blood pressure is and how her sugars are. It seems like a lot of people in the room and we always warn the mum and dad that there's going to be a lot more people there, especially if they've had babies before, because maybe the first time they've had their baby or the second time there might have been just one or two midwives there. This time we've got two babies to look after. These babies we knew were on the small side or 36 weeks gestation. So we had two paediatricians there, one for each baby if needed. Um, midwives then, we had our student midwife who was looking after her, my senior midwife Jean who was the midwife looking after her as well. Um, I was there as well and then our doctor on call, Dr um, Wachner was present just in case there was any complications. We would have then a midwife present as well to note the time of delivery, um, put on the baby's armbands, that kind of thing. Keep your eyes open and see who's coming up to you now. Hello. 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 Hello we then need to see which way the second baby is coming. We had already known from scans that the second baby was coming head first, which we call cephalic presentation. So we confirmed that by palpating her tummy, but by also by ultrasound. In Bernice's case, Dr. Um, Workner did the ultrasound and was able to confirm that it was head first. Jean then examined her and was able to feel the head vaginally and it was well down. So what we did then was she gave a few little pushes and the baby moved down nicely. We broke her waters around the second twin and she proceeded to have a normal delivery. Yes. Fantastic. Oh. 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 Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to pop them over here. Oh, God. While Bernice was pushing with her second baby, the baby's heartbeat had slowed down somewhat. So when baby was delivered, she was, he was a little bit stunned and rather than handing him to Bernice, we brought baby straight over to the paediatricians for further management. He actually did very well. Anesky arrived into the labour ward at about 6pm in the evening um, at that stage with strong contractions however wasn't just in active labour at that stage so we uh, assessed her, made sure everything was okay with her and her baby and we popped her out to the unit, the antenatal ward for a wee bit just to let her pains develop and you know use the shower and get some pain relief on board or whatever she needed. And she came back to us to the delivery ward around midnight um, and at that stage she was two centimetres in labour and doing really really well. Take a breath in and blow it out for me. Well done. Huge breath in. Now, remember what I said about the legs? Yeah. Keep yourself nice and relaxed. Take a breath in. Come on, Agnieszka. Big breath in. And blow it out. Well done. Okay. Fantastic, sweetheart. You're doing great. Keep that breath going. Come on, breathe in for me. And blow it out. And blow it out. Well done. <laughs> Contract. 
action. We want to get you pushing, okay? Baby shouldn't be too far away. With a bit of work to do, you're going to feel a lot of pressure and everything, but here we'll help you through it, all right? You'll do fine. With the next contraction, what you're going to do is you're going to take a big breath in. You're going to hold that breath. Close your lips really tightly because you don't want to let the breath out. You want to hold it. Put your chin in your chest. Push it into your bone. Long, hard and steady, okay? And you'll be fine. At this point, Agnieszka's labour is moving really well. Uh, she had queried whether she might consider having an epidural um, at this point, but she's actually eight centimetres dilated at this stage, um, and she's only here about an hour and a half, so she's doing really good. So with a bit of support, we're going to keep mobilising, maybe go to the shower for a wee bit, um, and have some Entinox gas available for her, um, and we'll keep her going. She's going to get through this. She'll have a baby soon. Fantastic. Well done. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Brilliant. Now blow out for me. Blow out. <laughs> Fill your lungs up again. Don't get scared. Take a big breath in. Chin down and another huge push. Good woman. Come on, Agneska. Keep your chin on your chest. That's it. And push right down. That's it. Well done. Keep it going. Keep it going. Brilliant. Now blow out and go again. <laughs> fresh breath in for me. Come on, fresh breath in quickly. Big, big push. I think the most important thing with a first time mother is to go through everything that's happening. So to tell them what's happening right now and what you expect to happen within the, the next wee, wee time. And breathe slowly and relax. Well done. If you kind of can put a bit of a time on it, so if you can give them a focus and say, okay, so you're doing this right now, we're not going to concentrate on you having your baby, we're going to concentrate on this half hour slot and what you're going to do for this half hour. Due to an emergency regarding her blood pressure, Sajini has delivered her baby boy a few hours earlier than planned. Sajini was admitted last night as planned because she was due to have an elective caesarean section today. But when she was admitted last night, unfortunately, her blood pressure was higher than we expected and was difficult to control. And it was decided it wasn't safe to wait till this morning. And so they decided to section her last night. It's classified as an emergency section, but it was planned really. It just happened a couple of hours earlier than she expected it to. Um, both mum and baby are doing fine. I went in Tuesday just to had an admission, an early admission for my C-section scheduled on a Wednesday uh, because um, of my blood sugar, they had to incorporate, you know, my regime, my blood sugar regime, like at the end, my blood pressure went up so high that they could not control it anymore. So they have no choice but to do the C-section that night. She's doing very well. Um, baby was born very well. Everything was okay that way. And from the diabetes point of view, her sugars have come back fairly well to what they were before the pregnancy. She's gone back on the medication she was on prior to the pregnancy. So she's got her body back and we will continue to monitor her blood sugars to make sure she stays safe. I saw him first when my husband was holding him. Happy, even though I had a hard time bringing him for 38 weeks. Like, at least he's, he looks good, he's fine. Keep it coming, fantastic. Take a breath in again for me, big breath in. Come on quickly, big breath in. 
Quickly. Huge push, that's it. Come on. Loads of brown hair peeking out at me here now. Chin down on your chest, sweetheart. Not into the bed. That's it. Down into your bum. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Brilliant. And again, fresh breath in. Fresh breath in. I think just seeing him. Yes, I'd like to see him because I, I felt him now for, for the past few months and I would like to finally see him, have him in my arms and um, yeah, just meet the baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, we'll do that now in a couple of minutes. Okay, so you might still feel a bit of pressure and some contraction pains and that's because your placenta has to be delivered. Not half as big a deal as that, okay? Ideally, we would like to deliver every baby crying up onto its mother's chest, but for whatever reason, they don't always do that. So we will, if needs be, cut the cord and bring the baby over to the resource and give it some suction and some oxygen and whatever it needs just to stimulate it, to give us a good cry and get the lungs open and get them set up for life. Yes, you do. Well done. I'll cover them now. So we'll make sure they're working. Baby Julian was 38100 grams. Um, he came out looking, you know, very, very cute, uh, very good, uh, active baby once he was back on mum's chest. He was a nice, a big baby, really, for Agnieszka. Uh, 3.8 3 was a big baby for Agnieszka. Um, but she did very well to deliver him herself uh, with minimal help from us, really. Around and look for it and try and find it. As Bernice's twins were born at just 36 weeks, they are currently being cared for in the neonatal unit. My labour went fine now, only for the epidural that I didn't want. <laughs> it was great. I, would, I, would, I wouldn't have been able for it without the epidural. Christopher was the first. And then he was born at 2.38. And Tyler was born at 2.51. Pushing Tyler now was, it was tiring, I was breathless like, after the first one and then having to push Tyler, then I was just exhausted. That was the hardest bit, I think. He was very quiet at the start. Um, they kind of said it to me, I think they said to me, during the birth, they've got to come out now, Bernice, Do you know, so I kind of had to put as much, as much into it as possible to get Tyler out and um, he needed a little bit of help with his breathing. He did cry himself, but then he was gurgling a bit, so he needed a little bit of help, like, thankfully now he's fine. It was upsetting when I just, when I first seen him. It was upsetting to know, to think that I couldn't hold him or, and then I left for half an hour and I came back, I said, oh, I can't go to bed yet, you know? And I came back up to them and I was lucky enough, Christopher was getting, just had just been fed. So I got to hold him last night, but um, this is actually my first time holding Tyler since I've had him yesterday. So the heart and the first time holding the both of them together is, you know, as well. It's it's lovely. <laughs> well, I'm still in shock and awe, just trying to get over, but feeling good, happy about it. I'm on cloud nine now. I can't wait to get them home, to see their brother and sister and for all my friends and families to see them as well, like, can't wait. They're doing great. The first little twin was two, three kilos, and then the second little fellow, which we knew was a little bit smaller, was two, one. They're small, so they may well have to stay until they are 2.4 kilos anyway, until their feeding is established and they're feeding independently, really, and mum is happy to take them home. She would probably go home herself and pay regular visits to the babies. A few hours after a tough labour, Agnieszka is getting to know her new baby boy, Julian. My labour um, from the moment that my cervix was dilated until six, eight centimetres was very quick. So unfortunately there was, not, there was no time for epidural, even though I planned for it. Um, I was advised not to take it because that would just slow down my labour. 
Um, so it was only two and a half hours of, of active labor and active pushing until the baby was born. It was very difficult. I was looking forward to the end, um, but I can still remember that it was a lot of hard work. He was a happy baby though. He's a little bit bigger than I expected, so it was difficult to um, have him out, um, but I managed in the end. He's been very good, um, he's feeding and, and sleeping well. Uh, I am still tired myself, um, but I'm hoping that once I get home I'll be able to recover a little bit and then um, we can get to know each other a little bit better uh, in the peace of our own house. His name is Julian Reza Zaman. His weight was um, 3 kilos, 0.81 which is in pounds, 8.5. I decided to go home earlier today because I thought that um, recovering in the peace of your own house um, will be more beneficial for myself and the baby. And so that is the reason why I'm going home early.